The reason we prefer the taping method is just a much easier way for an inexperienced painter to get a straight line. When it comes to selecting your tape, it's very important to get the tape that's appropriate for your surface. A lot of the blue tapes we've found will leave a blue residue when we tape our white ceilings. So we've gone to a delicate surface purple tape from Sure Tape. We use our green tape for shiny trim. And then we have a little bit of regular yellow masking tape for areas where the, the painter's tape overlaps itself. Because one of the features is the safe release does not want to stick well to itself. So anywhere we have a, an overlap of these, this tape, we'll take a piece of the yellow masking tape and just tape that down. Okay, we're using our purple painter's tape, delicate surface tape to mask the ceiling. I'm going to show you a quick procedure here that will help you get a straight line when what is usually a typically crooked line anyway. So we're sort of going to create an optical illusion here and get a very nice straight line using the natural straightness of the wall. So I'm going to hold this roll flat against the wall. Now I don't want to just smooth the, the tape. This is the mistake most people make. That's where you get wrinkles. We're just going to press it gently and find that natural straight line. And now I'll smooth. I'll hold my finger here and gently pull out another foot or two, keeping the roll right against the wall. Tap, 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 and smooth. Now. Here's the dilemma. Now I have to move my ladder. If I had a helper at this point, I could just hand this roll to them. But what I'll do is I'll pull out a little extra. I'll hold this, trying not to pull it off the ceiling, move my ladder. And again, you can see there, this would be much easier with two people. But again, it can be done with a single person. Now I take this straight line here, rotate the tape. And now again, tap, just gently pressing it finding that straight line and smoothing. And we'll continue this process, get the entire ceiling masked off, mask our trim, and we'll be ready to paint the walls. We're in the process of masking our trim, and similar to the ceiling, we want to use the same procedure, pulling out about six or eight inches, keeping the roll flat against the wall, and then just rotate this around. And again, at this point, just tapping. Tap, tap, tap. And then smooth down to the point where you stop. Roll out another six or eight inches of tape. Rotate it down just slightly. And again, gently tapping this onto the surface. This will give you a perfectly straight line every time. Makes it quick, a whole lot faster than cutting in by hand. We'll get this trim masked off, mask the baseboard. And again, we're one step closer to painting. At this point, when we get to the bottom, we'll just go ahead and tear our tape, having enough to go all the way down. And we want to go straight down into this corner. And we'll begin masking our baseboard. And again, as we mentioned, where we overlap our safe release tape, we want to use a little bit of the yellow masking tape because this tape does not stick well to itself. So we'll take a little piece of this yellow tape and we'll just make our corner nice and neat here. I know that's a little detail, but boy, this makes a difference in a good job and a bad job. Okay. The final step before painting the walls is going to be to finish masking our base. Now we've got our trim and our ceiling mask. We're going to use that similar procedure, keeping the roll flat against the wall. This is a really tough edge because it's usually very thin. So we want to just rotate this roll of tape down where it's almost touching, and then just gently tap this onto this small edge, then smooth, holding your finger where you last smoothed, pull out another six, eight inches, just twist the roll down, tap it, and smooth, and just continue that process. You'll get a nice little rhythm. This will get masked off very quickly. Okay, we purposely wrinkled the tape here just in case you make a mistake. Now, it's real easy just to hold the tape behind where you have a wrinkle or a flaw and pull the tape up and then again just repeat that process. Turning your roll, rotating it down, and gently tap, 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 and smooth and see our wrinkle just corrects right out of there. And then you just progress on. We'll see here an example of what we're trying to avoid with a lot of the cut in with the brush. We want to roll this texture all the way in. You can see the wall texture here. 
You can see here where a brush was used. Now, had this been a dark color on this original paint job or a shiny paint, this would have been very obvious. Now, obviously, we're seeing it here because we're putting an angular light on it. So this type of technique would really be a problem, again, if we're using a dark paint, a shiny paint, or high angular light. We'll just go ahead and show you techniques to avoid that. We see another area here around the door. Typically, this is very slick and smooth, and you can see that it is. Of course, we've cut in here, but you see this smooth wall paint, and then we see the rolled texture out here on the wall. When light hits this, this textured area is going to appear darker. So that's what we, when we say banding, we're talking about this light band or a smooth band that would be around all the trim and along the line at the ceiling. We'll show these techniques in detail to avoid this common problem, give you the better solutions, get a great paint job.